Jesus says in his words, he says, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. There where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know, Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we come today not to question God, but to celebrate a life that's well spent. And we're celebrating the life of Brother Keith Wiggins on this day. Paul says in his words, he says, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And so if y'all don't mind, just give God a hand clap of praise for a life well spent on this earth. The family has already outlined a program uh, for us today to, to govern ourselves by. We're going uh, to have the military to come before us, and then after that we will proceed uh, with the remainder of the program. So at this time we're going to have the United States military to come.
At this time, we're going to have a music selection from Ms. Sarah Rucker. just one more time, y'all. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my Heaven at home when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. And I say, because I'm free, yes, cause God's eye is on the And I know 
Sister Rucker, thank you for reminding us. Sister Cynthia, that's a song that says he watches over us. He's going to watch over you. He's going to watch over your kids. He's going to watch over your family. He's going to watch over all of us. Because Proverbs tells us, trust in the Lord. Lean not to thy own understanding, but all thy ways acknowledge him. And guess what? He shall direct our path. So he watches over us. Thank you for reminding us of that song there. Every now and then, we need a reminder, y'all. Especially in times like this, we need a reminder. And so the family has outlined the order service for us, and we're going to go ahead and continue on in it. There's a scripture reading coming from the book of Psalm, Psalm 23, familiar passage of scripture. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I will feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You anointed my head with oil, and my cup runs over. No matter what happens, surely in goodness shall follow me. All the days of my life. But David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then over in 2 Timothy, Paul's victory speech. And this is one that probably Brother Keith can resonate with this because he served this country. Paul goes on, he says, if I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Key said to us, he said, I fought a good fight, Cynthia. He wants you to, he want to remind you, Cynthia, that not only fought a good fight, but he finished the race. One thing he ultimately did is he kept the faith. Yeah. And so we don't have to worry now because Paul said finally there's laid up for Keith and for me the crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day and not only me but to you also who have loved his appearing. Let's pray. Most gracious, eternal Father, Father, you are the God of all comfort. You comfort us in times like these. Lord, I pray right now that you will comfort this wife, Cynthia, and the children and the relatives, the cousins, and even all those who are close related and friends, Lord. Lord, we comfort us, Lord, because during the difficult days, God, you always need somebody to come along the side of us. And when you left this earth, Lord, you left your spirit to come down and reside in us. So, Lord, allow Cynthia to understand and the family the promises, Lord, that you said a long time ago. The promise you said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, God, we know that Brother Keith, dear God, doesn't have to go through any more suffering pains, God. 
We know God that he doesn't have to take any more pills or go in and see any more doctors because God, he's with you now. He's in a new Jerusalem, a house built and made without hands. And so God, we just today just want to honor his life and his legacy, Father, all that he has done upon this earth, God. So we celebrate, Lord, we celebrate. Yes, we're gonna miss him. Yes, I'd be remiss to tell Cynthia, don't stop crying, no. That's what the tears are for. That's what the tear glass is for. But David says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Family and friends, the good thing about it is that we'll see him again. We just won't see him on this side of the Jordan. But when we see him, we'll have to go there to be with him. And so, God, we thank you now for all that's you do, God, all that you're going to do, even in the midst of this service, God, we ask that you will have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The uh, program calls for two minutes of remarks, and those who have something they want to say, just come to the microphone. But I want to say to Cynthia and the family, Krista, I'm sorry, Krista and the family. On behalf of Dr. Craig Oliver and the Elizabeth Baptist Church family, uh, we he, just want you to know we're there for you and your family. And if there's anything that you need, uh, don't hesitate. Reach out to us. Minister Darlene Henderson is our coordinator. And whatever you need, if it's prayer, counseling, just feel free to touch bases with her, and she'll get you whatever you need, all right? Uh, thank you. I want to know that. So at this time, uh, if anyone feel led to come and want to say words of encouragement uh, to, to this wife and to, to, to the family, uh, now is the time. And uh, let me just say this here. They put two minutes here and want to kind of abide by the two if we can. And so that if y'all got any extra that you want to, to say, uh, just send, give Sister Crystal a call or, or send an email and share more. But right now, we just want to share as much as we can within two minutes. So here you, anyone feel led to come right here and pick up the microphone. Stratford Doyle. Keith here is my buddy, my co-worker, and my soldier in arms. I retired uh, for 24 years in the Navy, and he always used to say, why do they call you Doc? And I used to try to keep eating healthy. I used to at the job. Man, with the Navy, I'm a medic. He said, man, I'm in the Army, man. This and this is and that. I said, well, when are you going to retire, Craig? He said, man, I'm going to retire. Uh, when I get my 20 years, you know, it's coming up soon. I said, well, I'm going to beat you to it. I met Wiggin in uh, 2006 at MARTA. We worked together 10 years on the same shift. And, uh, I said, I'm a doc, man. He said, I was a Navy, I was a mechanic in the Army. But for some reason, me and him always finish our stuff last. <laughs> I said, well, man, I was a medic. I fixed people, man. I said, you're going to be fixing trucks. Let me fix these buses. So I would go ahead and finish up my stuff. And I would help him with his. And, uh, and uh, we, were, we were friends, but he stayed so far away from me. 
stayed, I stayed in Douglasville. He stayed in Auburn, Georgia. And uh, we kept in contact for a short while. He went ahead and retired. And I was so happy for him in, 2000, in 2017. I retired in 2015. I said, man, why didn't you retire early? He said, man, I was trying to wait till all my points get together and they get it all organized. I said, man, I be finally beat you up on something, man. He said, what you beat me up on? I said, so I was so happy and excited for him. I said, my certificate of retirement say Obama. <laughs> he says Trump. <laughs> he said, man, I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> I said, well, at least you retired, man. At least you retired. And then, uh, so uh, if anybody had with, with Wiggins, I've uh, been with Wiggins while he was driving. He used to go, we used to go pick up buses and test drive buses. For some reason, he would drive on test drive by himself when the bus came back. I'm like, man, what happened to the windshield? <laughs> what happened to the mirror? Because you know the streets on Atlanta, all the poles on the street, especially in downtown Atlanta here when we worked out Perry Boulevard in Northwest Atlanta. He said, man, I don't know what happened. It kind of jumped out there on me. So we would go ahead and fix it. <laughs> we would fix it before management would find out something about it. And uh, I love my boy Wiggins. I really did, y'all. I just didn't tell him that I loved him. We don't tell a lot of guys don't tell the guys who we work with that we love them. We don't even tell our family members, the guys that we love them, our fathers. So tell everybody, tell everybody that you love them. Is there another one? Well, certainly, uh, we do appreciate those words of um, comfort and encouragement, my brother. Uh, and best and well said, because it's always good to have somebody who knows you and who can stand and say something good about you. And so uh, we appreciate that. Um, we're going to take the time to allow the musician play a little softer, but uh, read this obituary. And then finally, I uh, will come back with uh, words of comfort with our eulogy. There's a scripture in the Bible from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 
to. It says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal and a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. As I was looking in this obituary, it says, whenever Keith was around, laughter filled the air. He was always such a positive spirit with a big heart, and he was able to see the good in everyone. I want to talk today from this simple thought, living your life with a purpose. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask right now that you will come. Send a word, Father, that will be refreshing. One, to reflect and remind this family of Keith Wiggins and all that he done and served and for his family, his community, and the people that he came in contact. So Lord, I ask that you allow me to decrease while you increase, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. And it says his laughter fill the air. In other words, his laughter fill the room. The Bible here tells us, he says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Solomon, who is the author of this particular book of Ecclesiastes, tells us clearly that our time on earth is just for a moment. The significant thing, my brothers and sisters, about time is it don't wait for anyone. Time is always ticking and moving. Solomon tells us that there's a time to be born, but there's a time to die. Well, verse 12 says, I know there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live. So today, allow me to talk about living your life with a purpose while we're still living in this tent. So the question is, what is your purpose in life? We know Brother Keith's purpose. We just demonstrated and saw the United States flag that was draped on the coffin and presented to the So he served in the US military. But we're called to make an impact on someone's life. We were, we were placed upon this earth, my brothers and sisters, to make a difference. I tell you, it's not how long you live, but how you live. See, that little dash between the birthday and the death date is the most where people remember you the most. People remember you the most when they know how much you care and not how much you know. And our brother stood up here and shared with us how much he cared for Brother Keith Wiggins. For all of us, truth be told, when we wake up in the morning, we ought to want to do something good for somebody. Making ones brighter is really making a difference. So one, we're called to make an, a difference, but then second of all, we call to serve. Keith served in the United States military. He served in his community. He served and worked for Martyr. Jesus put it on record. He says in Matthew 20, 28, he says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, he said, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And Jesus was concerned about serving people, but he was also concerned about helping people. 
So one, we, we're called to, to make a difference, but we're also called to serve. But then the third, we're also called to love. Let me give y'all a little parable out of the Bible in Matthew 25, 34, 30, verses 31 and 40. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. And I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the one, the righteous, would answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we see you thirsty? When did we see you needing a drink. When did we see you as a stranger? When did we see you was naked and clothed you? When did we see you was sick or in prison and come to you? And the king would answer and say to him, surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. In other words, Jesus saying to us, all of us are called to love. Love what? Love one another. Huh? Love, love not only one another, but love to learn from one another. What else we, we call? We call to live at peace with one another. And here's another one. We're called to listen to one another. But we also call to lift one another up, not to tear one another down. And then lastly, we're called to lean on one another. So even when this particular ceremony on, it's over with, our dear sister still need all of us to lean on her. And so looking at living in your life, we're called, one, to make a difference. Two, we're called to serve. Three, we call to love. But then, living your life with a purpose, we're called to impart into someone's life. What I mean? Well, what you put in life is what you get out of life. We are here on earth to be different. God did not make us all the same. So what I'm saying is we can't live in this body and earth any kind of way. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, verse 19, he said, Oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? He said, For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which is God. God expects all of us to live a meaningful and fulfilled life that has promises a great expectation. How I know, First Peter tells me, the Bible says you are chosen. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nature. You are his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Not only that, God expects us all to be different. That's why he put it in Matthew 5, 13, 14. He said, you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seen? Any cooks in the house? Huh? Yeah. Y'all take that, take something, meat, or put it in the pot, and you season, and you put stuff in. It makes a difference. It tastes good, don't it? That's what our life is, should be about, making a difference. Wherever you go, you walk through, come, wherever room you walk in, 
That ought to be something that somebody can say, something about you that's different. And Jesus goes on and says, you are the light of the world, a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hidden. But he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. How do a brother light shine? His light shine, even though he retired early, his light still shine. So I say to you, don't, you don't have to toot your own horn. Others will do that for you. All you got to do is just live your life with a purpose. A good friend of mine, Dr. Miles Monroe, said, you write your funeral while you live. And we, we got, we got a, a saying there, give me my flowers, while I'm living. And that's what you want. You want to see your flowers. So the reason we are expected to impart in someone's life because we are to glorify God's character and God's nature. And that is love for the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. But the second one is to love your neighbor as well as yourself. Living your life with a purpose. We're called to make a difference. Called to be different. But we are also called to leave an imprint or a legacy on someone's life. Again, Ecclesiastes 3, 9 says, What profit has the worker from that which he labors? I say this, let the works I do speak for me. But let the works you do speak for you. It's a sad day, my brothers and sisters, on, on this earth when your name is not remembered among family and friends. So I say leave a legacy so others can remember you by. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 22, it says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. So I have to pause and ask this question. What legacy? What imprint are you leaving behind? Can I answer that, Krista? Because read in obituary, he, the laughter filled wherever he go. Is it your smile you want to be remembered by? Is it your laughter? Or is it your demeanor? Or is it your kind? Is it your labor of love? Paul goes on here in 1 Corinthians 13, chapter, verse 11. He said, Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. He said, I understood as a child. He said, I thought as a child. But Paul said, but when I became a man, Paul said, I did some things. You and I, when you become mature, when you become mature in this word, when you become mature, as an individual. Paul said, you got to put away some childish things. Amen. Paul said, when you become a tour person, Lord, there are some things we need to put away. Can I help y'all with that? Amen. Put away jealousy. Put away envy. Put away hatred. Put away gossiping. Put away selfish ambition. Put away dissension. That's just a name of few. But then he goes on and said, but we ought to put on a new man which is the character of Jesus Christ. The new man, y'all, is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, which is love, which is joy, which is peace. You know, three things. If you ain't got love, you sure can't have joy. And if you ain't got love and you ain't got joy, you sure can't have peace. He said, but go on, put on love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I leave y'all with this statement as I begin to close. Don't be a shadow. Be a trail. Allow someone to walk into your footprints. Living your life with a purpose so that when the day comes, day like today when it comes, Jesus will ask you, why should I let you into his kingdom? You can tell them, Lord, I tried to make a difference while I was here. 
Lord, I, I tried to make an impact on someone's life. Lord, I, I, I tried to impart into someone's life. But I tried to leave an imprint on someone's life. The other day, Brother Keith Wiggins took a flight to heaven. He fought a good fight. The good fight of life. He kept the faith. He finished his commitment to his family and society. But he finished the race. What race? The race of life where there's no more pains, no more problems, no more pills, no more bills, but just a place of rest. I say, Brother Keith, Sleep on. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. God said, come on. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this time together. We pray, God, for the words that has been shared. We pray, God, that it won't fall on deaf ears, Lord, that it won't return back void, that, Lord, that while we're here on this earth, while we have time, that we can all try to make a difference in this world. What this world needs is love. What this world needs is people who love you. What this world needs, Father, is people love one another. So we thank you, we love you, and we honor you, God, with everything that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. This time, we're going to have another selection from Sister Sarah Rucker. Oh, 
wanna be where you are. Wanna be where you are. I wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Do you wanna be where he is? Lord, I wanna be where, 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 where you are. Gotta be where you are, yeah. Wanna be, I wanna be where you are, Lord, yes. I gotta be where you are, yeah. yeah. Gotta be where you are, Jesus. Hey, I wanna walk with the Father, talk with the Son, y'all. be right there with him, yes. Yeah, yeah. I got a mother up there, a father up there, a sister up there, and a brother up there, y'all. But most of all, I want to be where he is, yeah. Yes, want to be where you are. Give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, amen. Well, first, give an honor to God, who is most certainly the head of my life, to our wonderful, wonderful eulogists. Thank you so much for all of your words of encouragement that you've rendered to this family, to our wonderful musicians. Didn't they do? Lord. I mean, I had to, I don't know if y'all saw me poke my head in. <laughs> um, but thank you all both so much for uh, all of your musical renditions that you've given to this family. I know they most certainly say thank you as well. To the family and friends who have gathered here today as well as on our live stream, thank you all so much for your cards, your calls, your prayers, your floral arrangements, your visits, and most importantly, your presence here today. 
and your outpouring of love that you've given to this family, I know that she most certainly appreciates it. Our prayer is always that in the coming days, you would still reach out to them, still call her, still text her, let her know that the same people that showed up and the same people that are supporting her, it doesn't end on today and it'll continue after today. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, on behalf of myself, my father, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, Mr. Souls, and Mr. Hakeem, we would personally like to thank this family for entrusting us for your dear, dear loved one. In doing so, we've prepared this memorial plaque to keep to keep and cherish his beautiful and loving memory until you meet him again. Thank you and may God continue to bless each and every one of you all. We will now proceed with our committal service. Followed by that, we will then have a benediction. Then we will recess to the outside for our dove releasing ceremony. Let's pray, dear Lord. We we'll give you thanks for the life of one who has been taken from us, for what he has meant to the loving family and friends. We give thanks, Lord, for the love of God and for the salvation that is freely offered to us by Jesus Christ. Bless us all now. We pray in the name of the one who gave this prayer to his disciples. As y'all repeat after me, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom and the power, and the, power. And, the and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. For as much as it pleased the Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right? Blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord. Henceforth, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. Now works do follow them. May grace and peace be unto you, the God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the maker of heaven and earth, who sits high and looks all over us, and we thank you, God, for all that has been done today. We offer this prayer up to you as signed, sealed, and as delivered. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we're going to ask everybody to stand. Family, family. Tragedies are commonplace All kinds of diseases People are slipping away The economy's down People don't get enough pay But as for me All I can say is Thank you, Lord, for All you've done for me Folks without homes are in the streets And the drug habits, some say that they just can't beat Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe But you've been my protection every step of the way Wanna say thank you, Lord, for all you've done 